Hello everyone, I'm Olga Volko from Good Cause Travel and Events and I have with me here today, especially for my backstage, Neil Brownlee, Head of Business Events at Visit Scotland. Hi Neil. Hi Olga, hi everyone. We work a lot with Scotland, so it's important for us and our audience to get the perspective of Scotland's National Tourism Board on the current situation with the industry in Scotland due to COVID-19 and the plans for the recovery. So, well, delighted to be here and delighted to hopefully say some useful insights and tell you what's been going on in Scotland. So could you tell us in a few words about what's, uh, what's going on in Scotland at the moment? Uh, yes, I think um, your viewers will not be surprised to hear that the situation in Scotland <clears> is not, not unlike nearly every other country has experienced. Uh, we had the lockdown since March 23rd, so we're I think in the ninth week of this. As all the hotels are closed, all the pubs, the, most of the shops, everyone's working from home, all the schools are still closed in Scotland. And um, it's been a very strange situation for everyone, I must say, and certainly a big shock to the, the tourism industry generally, and certainly the business events community. Um, it's been a very, very tough time. Um, but I, you know, I, would, I would say that we're, we're not a special case in Scotland. It's just as bad in a lot of our friends and colleagues around the world. So it's, it's a very similar situation. So um, obviously we all know that the impact on the industry has been really dreadful. Um, can you tell us a few words about the impact on the industry? Uh, on mice industry in Scotland, uh, how is everybody doing? Um, what's yes, well, I think um, when the first initial um, restrictions were imposed on mass gatherings, this, this came out from the Scottish government. And unfortunately they didn't um, ask us first about what the definition should include. So it did immediately include all gatherings of 500 or more people. And I think we felt that um, mass gatherings was too broad an expression because um, business events, incentives, and every, every type of business event typically does not need the emergency services to be in attendance or planned to be there. Um, the idea was that any mass gathering would would need an ambulance or something present so that was quite a bad start and then I think number 10 did the same thing for England and the rest of the UK so um, it was pretty much overnight an instant seismic shock I think uh, we were just on the beginning of looking forward to the incentive season uh, perhaps April May starting and I think it I think we were all expecting it to happen but when it did it was really quite sudden and yeah for the hotels to be boarded up, some of the wonderful hotels in, in Edinburgh, like the Balmoral, are boarded up. And that was quite a shock for people like me in Edinburgh, where I used to work at the Balmoral. Seeing it boarded up in the city centre, that was something almost like a science fiction movie. And I know all the other big, wonderful hotels around the world, we know, certainly in Scotland, um, you know, overnight, it just stopped. And I think for the hotel managers and for our industry and the business events industry, um, there's almost a sense of we didn't know what to do because there was no end time, there's no end game. And part of the problem is there still isn't. Um, but we take some comfort from the fact that people are beginning to open up around the world because I think Scotland is a few weeks behind everyone else. So um, we're going to look and learn and see what, what problems everyone else has <laughs> first in the reopening. What are Visit Scotland and the Scottish Government doing uh, to support the industry? Well, Visit Scotland, as your viewers may know, we are a government agency. So our bosses are in the Scottish Government in Edinburgh, um, as opposed to Westminster and London. And um, from the outset, because tourism generally is such a major part of the Scottish economy, um, a lot of the focus has been on the individual business um, operators, if you like, in tourism. So the bed and breakfasts, the other suppliers, the hotels, the pubs up and down Scotland, often in rural rural areas. And um, it has been quite a challenge to ensure that um, business events have had a voice and, so, and events and festivals in general. But now we're at a good point where there's been a lot of funding programs have come out, which, to be honest, are still tourism specific funding. Um, but my job has been to liaise with the Scottish Government to speak with DMCs in Scotland, also the main cities, the convention bureaus and the big hotels, to find out what they need, what they want. And we've put those ideas into 
into Scottish government. Um, but one thing we did find early on in the first two weeks was a slight um, sense that our, our role was not clear as the main national tourism organisation. Mm -hmm. We had to give everyone time and space to deal with the firefighting, to deal with all the initial shock and all the problems of cancellations, clients wanting to lose the contracts, clients wanting to know what would happen. So in terms of specific responses, we see our role as offering reassurance to the business events community, the hotels, the members of site. The, it's quite a small community to, in terms of the very high end you know, business events in Scotland. We all know each other. I know them all. They, they all know me. And it's really to let them know that they're not alone, that we understand we're one part of government that does understand what they're going through. And our number one job, uh, we're going through a difficult time, it's not as difficult a time as them. Our number one job is to help them recover and to set this all up again in a few months' time. So the sort of initiative we've asked for um, is some new funding models. Most of them are for events in 2021, which will need help to come back. Um, we're also trying to establish a DMC support fund. I know it's something that our friends in Ireland have. I've always been very jealous of them there. Um, so we need to look at what they're doing and just copy it. Mm -hmm. uh, invitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Um, but also messaging as well to, to our stakeholders, reassurance, and also to our clients to we're not selling to them. We don't want to be the first country in the world to sell. Nobody wants to be sold to. But we think people want to be educated and they're happy to take this time to learn about new destinations. Um, but it's it's been quite quite a strange experience working out what our role is, I must say. Mm -hmm. And what's the current outlook, would you say, in the uh, Scottish industry, um, mice industry? Is it uh, quite positive? Um, or is everybody still feeling a bit shell shocked? Um, how how has the yes. um, attitude changed? I think I think it's moved from shell shock to a bit of a plateau. I think the, the government furlough scheme from central government in the UK, the furlough scheme helped for sure. That was a huge game changer in terms of that. And we know now it's been extended to October. Mm -hmm. I think the so the initial shock has passed. I think we're all waking up every morning saying, yes, okay, so I didn't dream it, this is real. Mm -hmm. And a bit like yourself and many others on the call, you know, you own your own companies. That's so it's a very fine balance. And um, I think we all have plans, but none of us had a plan for this and for it to go on for so long. So the mood now is, it changes from week to week. We know we're on a plateau. We know that nothing is going to change until government are able to tell us more. Um, and you know that um, the United Kingdom government lifted some restrictions for England, specifically England. But at the moment, the three other devolved parliaments, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, they're being a little bit more cautious. So I think I can be honest with your viewers and say that there is a little bit of anxiety and frustration, I think, in Scotland, that now we need clarity because the, the timing of the reopening can open, uh, can change. It can be June, it can be October. It doesn't matter when, but we need clarity now in terms of our hotels, whether it's Turnberry or Glen Eagles or St Andrews, or the SEC or the EICC. They, they can start planning if they're given some guidelines. Mm -hmm. And I think it's possibly the same in other countries, but the mood is moves from being optimistic to pessimistic, and I think um, all the recovery plans we're suggesting and we're, I think that one way to look at it is a bit like room service. So uh, plan for the worst, expect it to be back in March. And if it arrives in November, fine. Mm -hmm. um, so optimism and pessimism. And I think one of the strange things about this crisis is that it is global. So everyone is in the same boat. And um, I, do you think that your, um, or do you know if, if your plans of recovery, um, your policies of recovery, are they going to be uh, mirroring um, the rest of the UK's policies or is Scotland going to have slightly different, um, or some policies are going to yes. be slightly different? Um, 
In terms of the recovery policy or the messages, um, it, it will be slightly different. The, the Scottish brand is always slightly different, sit alongside the Visit Britain brand. Uh, the, the, the strongest brands are Scotland, London, and you know Ireland. We have a lot in common uh, with Ireland. We, we need to do things in a way that we can carry on with the original Scotland messaging, but adapt it in the post-COVID environment, whether that's pre-vaccine or post-vaccine. And the policies will be Scotland specific, but the look and the feel, um, I think, uh, will be different. Um, but we know that the Scotland brand is is strong. People will be expecting to see it. Um, but nobody wants to be first out to market. But equally, we don't want to be following our friends in three weeks' time. So we, we have some ideas ready to go. Um, and as ever, the rest of us at Scotland will be focusing on the consumer market. But we know that, that people like you and your colleagues in the incentives world, it's a very specialist, dedicated and discerning market. So we've always been proud in Scotland that we have a reputation for knowing what we're doing or knowing what we're talking about. And it's important that we don't let Scotland's recovery for business events be swamped with irrelevant messaging and consumer stuff. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that um, communication previously. So, um, uh, would you say that communication and collaboration between um, convention bureaus and um, uh, DMCs, hotels, venues is particularly important um, in this current crisis? Uh, yes, definitely. And I think it's reminded people why it's important to get together and speak a bit more, um, whether it's my own colleagues or um even people like yourself olga you know it's, it's this is it's actually great to be able to speak like this because it possibly wouldn't occur to us uh, to do it in normal times and a lot of people have been running around to make advisory groups and task forces which if i'm honest they they always existed but they always existed in the background and now we've recreated three task forces and the role the collaborations between the cities, the hotels, the commission bureaus, and the national government, it's more important than ever. And it's been clear to me that when we finally found the right moment to speak to our hotels and venues, because we said to them, you know, when you're ready, let's have a chat and you can tell us what you want from us. You know, that was three weeks in and it, I, I realized quite early on that they thought I would know a lot of intelligence about the virus or the recovery time or the government restrictions that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But because they heard it from me that I didn't know, it actually reassured them. Yes. Um, that everybody's in the same boat. Yes. There's, there's, there's no secret seam of intelligence that anyone has. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so quite strange to have a, you know, a, a bit of a, I wouldn't say a leadership role, but a very defined role. Um, and I think I do not want that to go away in terms of everyone getting together, because as I keep saying before, the consumer market, all the hotels and venues we work with, most of them also operate in the consumer market. So um, Connor at Glen Eagles, you know, he's also losing his, um, you know, individual leisure visitors. So it's not just about business events. Um, but it's my job to be the business events voice and make sure that we, we get heard. But um, I think it's part of the reassurance, but it's also part of finding out from the coal face what they need mm -hmm. um, and also managing expectations of what I can ask for. Uh, because governments have a big, big, big long queue of priorities at the moment all over the world. And as ever, sometimes articulating tourism and more so when business events and what we do gets thrown into the tourism bucket as low paid or not very important jobs. I think this is the, the lack of visibility for business events and incentives and associations has been a, again, a major problem because they don't see beyond the, the tourist bit. Yeah, a bit of a ghost industry, isn't it? Yes, we're the biggest industry nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> so, um, 
you mentioned collaboration, uh, communication um, has definitely risen these days between various members of the chain, uh, so to say. Yes. Do you intend to carry, in, uh, carry it on forward? And so how do you see um, this um, association of DMCs, venues, hotels, convention bureaus ongoing, um, helping yes. promote the destination? Because there's no doubt that the uh, competition between destinations is going to become even fiercer than, than before. Um, we all know how difficult it's been in the past already, trying to sell a destination over others. Um, yes. Same piece of business, but um, quite possibly it's going to become much, much more fierce. So what's the kind of the policy, the strategy here? Well, I think for, at a Scotland level, I think the, the little collaboration groups will, will carry on no problem anyway. But um, when you look at organisations like Site, um, Site Scotland have a membership of about 50 hotels and venues. So they asked me to speak to them about a month ago. So I was able to speak to all of them. And that was, that was good. But um, in terms of so I think that'll happen naturally, and I don't care what the forum is, I'll, I'm happy to speak to them. Um, and it's the same with the other associations like PCMA and ICA. It, it's good to talk, and Scotland has quite a high profile on all of them. But in terms of our competitors, yeah, we're in fierce competition, but we're speaking more now as well. So yesterday I was on a call with my opposite members, so the heads, the heads of business events for... 32 European countries, including Russia. Mm -hmm. And we were on a call for two hours yesterday, and we were on a, another call two hours, you know, two weeks ago. And we're sharing information on how to help business events get up and running again. We're sharing information on best practice. Um, we're all going to be competing fiercely, um, but never has collaboration or discussion been so high amongst our colleagues and peers. So. You know, Ireland and Scotland, you know, Russia, France, Germany, it's all the usual suspects. And we all know each other. We all, we all know each other very, very well. And we spend a lot of time together. And um, I think that's going to be a good, a good outcome of this. And um, it also is part of getting across this message of business events being far more than a bunch of tourists. They're not leisure groups. They're not FIT. And we think and i think i've been saying for years that we need to find a higher level strategy for business events so that government understand what they are so for associations and everything it's quite easy because we can say we're changing the world or making it a better place because we're finding cures for every illness on the on the planet except covid 19 it would appear but for the incentive market this is good tourism it's High, high spend, educated, well traveled people coming mm. to our country. Um, that is good tourism. And often it's into rural areas, it's into Fife or the Highlands and Islands or Dumfries and Galloway. This is a different level of tourism from a lot of the sustainability debate that was occupying us before COVID 19 came along. And um, I think this is a once in a generational opportunity to once and for all, position business events as sector showcases, including incentives, because as you know, every incentive has a corporate company behind it, whether it's Boeing or BIC or um, Aston Martin or pharmaceuticals. And if we can find a way to connect these influential people coming to our country uh, who happen to be having a nice time, happen to be staying in luxury hotels um, all of the time because they've earned it, um, this is an opportunity for us to reposition business events and never again be swept into the tourism bucket or, for that matter, the mass gatherings bucket. We're too important for that. Mm. Yeah, it needs to be sort of linked more to the sustainable theme. Yes, and um, as you know, and all your colleagues know, sustainability is not, not just about stopping doing things, it's about doing things differently. Mm -hmm. And I think this crisis has demonstrated to everyone around the world just how interconnected everything is. There's not a single element of public or private life now mm -hmm. that isn't dependent on the other. And suddenly, um, you know, it's shown that if, if a plane isn't flying, the air crew don't have jobs then they can't pay for childcare, or then it's just a spiral 
Mm. And I think the, su the sustainability debate hasn't gone away, but it's still fundamentally changed. And business events can be part of that narrative. Yeah. Um, so um, could you share with us any uh, plans for immediate business development strategies that Visit Scotland is um, planning for this year, for next year, uh, from the sort of Visit Scotland point? Yes. Um, from a business advice point of view, Visit Scotland, we are just in the final stages of getting sign off for a new digital campaign um, with a working title, I believe. And um, this is it's quite a big piece of work and um, hopefully it's going to change the face of business events in Scotland. Um, I can't say too much about it, but we're hoping to have that ready for June mm -hmm. uh, because, as you know, people are going to sell. And this is going to reposition business events within Scotland, taking incentives and corporates with it, with it um, but slightly changing the, the narrative as we've been trying to do for, for years now. Uh, it's not so much the how you have a business event, it's why. It's going to move things from the how, the how will my event fit, you know, when we know that what you can do in Scotland is important, the you know, experience is important, but the why, and uh, that's a campaign we're hopefully going to come out with in June, mm -hmm. called I Believe, and that'll be a lot of engagement, and I'm very confident it'll work well for the incentive market. Mm -hmm. um, what else are we doing? We will be looking at the normal. Yeah, so that, that's going to be a digital campaign. So uh, yeah, digital. Yeah, so online, and um, you'll see it in our branding and advertising, mm -hmm. and the look and feel. It'll look like a Visit Scotland campaign, a bit like our Legends campaign, but it will be for the dedicated business events channels because okay. anything else would just be irrelevant. Um, other things we're keeping a close eye on are the possibly virtual versions of some of the bigger trade shows. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting to see what happens with IMAX America. We know yeah. that we will know in about a month. I think they're opening the... Well, I believe. When? In June as well, I believe, right? Yes, it's yes. So we'll, June. <laughs> everything's June. And then if we don't hear in June, we'll just say July. <laughs> um, but yes, you, you and I should have been in Frankfurt today. Uh, what would have been leaving Frankfurt today? You would have had your normal group. I the, would probably be airport. going on the first trip to Scotland now. <laughs> yes, the, old, the good old days, the good old days when we used to do that. We're, we need to see if all these people like IMEX and IBTM look at virtual equivalents um, and we will adapt accordingly. I do feel strongly that it is Visit Scotland's job to be present at these events, even if no one else can be. Um, I'd like to think something happened in Las Vegas and IMEX. Um, I'm not optimistic, but that'll be for, for everyone to decide collectively. Um, but I would certainly think it's our job. We can't sit at home forever telling people to meet if we don't do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, other than that, we're still, we need to wait and see. Because if we can plan too much and then you know, it's wasted. But we know that our market's all, always looking a year out, two years out, three years out. So. In some respects, from the marketing and selling, not a lot has changed, but we're waiting. We're, every, every week is an adventure. Every week we know more. And what do you think about um, the social media campaigns that uh, some destination boards um, run at the moment already, um, more sort of targeted at the at how people feel about a destination. Do you um, support such campaigns? Do you think that they're useful or not so much? Yeah, I think they're very useful. They're more useful than ever at the moment because it's the only route to market. So anyone out there who, you know, doesn't have their website up to date, you know, they need to because it's the only way people are going to learn anything about your organization. And even if it's just special messaging for now. But no, we love online campaigns um, because if they're organic you don't need to spend fifty thousand pounds a week to get you know placements on google um, but also you can position your country and destination in a way that you want so i've always felt there's a, a sea of sameness in the way that destinations market themselves partly it's because i think clients rightly are looking for particular triggers or things they want, especially if it's an experience-based incentive. 
But we also think that with a country like Scotland, there is potential to change the the narrative or the positioning of why you might want to come to Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we we love these campaigns, and that's going to be the future for us. And I think we see a lot of our competitors launching campaigns and videos, and we think, "Ooh, that's good, or that's nice," or or we think, "Oh, that's that's very two thousand and five you know and but sometimes i think we have to go completely away from the business events area to make our point i think estonia have done a wonderful job um with some of their marketing just in terms of the experience and you know with not much money to play with and again these are all ideas that the destinations are beginning to swap swap ideas marketing awards marketing initiatives because none of us have vast sums of money so the attractiveness of digital is because it's actually quite inexpensive as well. But look out for an amazing new campaign for us soon. Mm. And is there any particular reason why you're waiting until June with it, uh, apart from the practicalities of getting it ready? Do you think that maybe it's a bit too early to start um, uh, so, sort of pushing your destination towards uh, travelers if all the borders are still closed and um, people are more maybe concerned about their... Uh, well-being at the moment yes it's exactly that it's a fine balance of picking the right moment so in the first three weeks when everyone was shell-shocked and didn't know what to do um it would have been completely wrong and it would have been completely tone deaf to start saying well come to scotland um <laughs> which is why we came up with scotland will wait yes. which means uh, don't worry if you can't come this year you know, we, we hope you'll come another time, but that, that whole discussion is for another time. But we do think the mood has changed um, in the last week or two weeks. Um, and I think the industry in Scotland, but also overseas, we've been waterboarded with bad news for two months. And now we need, to, people want some, something good because it sounds silly, but not everything is bad. You know, there's some good things about this. There's some opportunities here and when we say june it might be the end of may um everyone's just being very careful because whoever goes out first and gets it wrong either everyone's going to say all right they haven't got a, a clue or they're insensitive or um it's, they miss they they completely waste their effort because everyone's too preoccupied if we get a second wave or something so we're going to have it ready for whenever whenever we think is the right moment. But it's it's a very strange situation to be in, not wanting to offend anyone. And that's why it's more important than ever that we don't come out with something insensitive when people are still dying. Say, right, come to Scotland, please. We want all your business. And all the regional areas, such as you know, in England and Wales, you know, they're closed. They're still closed. They don't want visitors. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when the, the lead time of business events could be quite useful because yeah. we're talking you know, come next year yeah so talking about coming next year um physically um uh, do you work does visit scotland work with the airlines uh, traveling to scotland to um ensure that ticket prices are adequate um because as we know um they are quite expensive for the nations which have already opened their borders, for example. Um, and what other work uh, on the ground does Visit Scotland do to sort of facilitate the physical process of coming to Scotland? Yes. Well, for the airlines, um, a big part of Visit Scotland's job, not necessarily my team, but it is to, it's the route development. So it's making sure that North America or Europe or the Chinese direct flight, things like that, that the airlines know the opportunity in Scotland. I think, to be honest, um, it would be great if it was really just a matter of making sure that the prices were okay when things come back. I think actually the, the priority will be making sure that there's actual routes. So it's not gonna come back as it was in 2019. And all the airlines, I think, will uh, be taking time to consolidate their their planes, so all of those planes that they put into des into the desert, wrapped in cling film or whatever they do with planes, they're not going to come out again. Th those planes are gone, and some of the older equipment 
I think for the, the American carriers for sure, not not so relevant for your listeners, but you know, all these big seven five sevens, they're they're gone. They're not going to come back. Um, and the airlines will start with their most profitable routes, you know, London, New York, Paris, New York, all the usual. And um, however, there is some discussion that point to point flights, direct flights, could be more favored moving forward because people don't need to connect in Heathrow or Schiphol or somewhere. So that could be a positive. Mm-hmm. Um, but Visit Scotland will be, you know, as part of the wider Visit Scotland responsibility to bring people to Scotland. Yes, business events needs flights, incentives need flights. It'll be a massive, massive priority for Visit Scotland and the Scottish Government to ensure that A, there are routes, and B, it, the prices are viable. Mm-hmm. But it's all about making sure there's people can get here first. Mm. And what's your forecast? Um, when do people start traveling again? Um, when do groups start traveling again to Scotland? Um, have you got some sort of a forecast in mind? Yeah. Um, I have my own pet theory that when schools go back or people see normality, such as getting haircuts or going to pubs and restaurants, even in other countries, when they start seeing it in other countries or when we start seeing planes in the sky, I've got a theory that things will re restart quite quickly because September is actually a long way away. We've only been doing this for eight, nine weeks. September is still got June, July, August. And that's for the airlines and hotels and restaurants and everybody to work out how to operate with restrictions. So I, I have my own personal theory that there'll be quite a lot back to normal domestically by September. I think quite easily. It'll be restricted, but I think a lot of things will be back to normal in September. I think international travel, it's all about the confidence. Um, Everybody wants to get together. Everybody wants to see each other again. Everybody, amazingly, does want to get on a plane again. But the problem is the psychological impact of this crisis. The, the people's wish and desire to meet is going to hit the reality of what they have to go through to, in order to meet. Mm. And I think that could take, in terms of confidence, that could take you know, to next March or something. I think international groups that arriving in Scotland on a plane for an incentive. I mean, definitely next year, April, end of next year, hopefully, Mm. but don't quote me, but I can't see, I can't (laughs) see it being earlier. (laughs) Yeah, Visit Scotland said, but I think there is cause for optimism. Once people work out, once, once the magic formula is worked out, that, that would be good but there's worrying things that companies might decide never to put more than 50 or 60 people on a plane again ever again um but then there's the limitations of conference of video conferencing as we've seen today trying to have this call um we've only been doing it for eight weeks and people are tired of doing things virtually already yeah because it, it is not the same and uh, we think that vid, uh, virtual will, it's filling a gap at the moment, but it's not going to fill the void. And um, I think meeting face to face will come back. There'll be more virtual elements, but face to face will come back. It has to come back. The hotels cannot afford to be crushed by this. Mm. Um, but the hotels are not going to put all their eggs in one basket again. So, but you and I have a eight, nine weeks to think about what we need to do for this. These big hotel groups, you know, Hilton, Marriott, all these guys, they're not sitting sitting on their hands. They're going to work out how to solve this, how to ensure, how to future-proof them so it doesn't happen again. And the airlines too. And I, I have a theory that the airlines, when you read about the busy planes or the packed flights, I think there's an element of the airlines slightly pushing their luck, almost forcing the situation. Mm. So we're trying to have social distancing because otherwise the airlines will fail. And so in a nutshell, I think September for domestic easily, 
and domestic, I think everyone will be desperate to get anywhere. So Londoners will be desperate to get to Cornwall or Scotland. People in Scotland are, are be thrilled to get on a plane and go to London, be like a, be like a little boy, you know, on a, a flying. Um, but I think international, yeah, I, I can't see there being the confidence until next year. But um, your viewers can be assured nobody will be better prepared to welcome your guests than, than Scotland because we are joined up. We're in the same situation as everyone else at the moment, but tourism and business events are just, they're too important. And we love what we do too much to, to, make, this, to make this fail. And a world without tourism is just, is, is not viable and it's not going to happen. Mm. What about um, two week quarantine rule? Um, is um, Scotland going to adhere to um, this rule that has been announced recently by the Prime Minister? Yes, I think um, our First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has said she, she supports it. Mm -hmm. So if, if the two week quarantine rule, so we'll, we'll have to do it. But if that is to last until August, September, it's a bit of a problem. Yeah. But if it lasts beyond Christmas, that's, I mean, that's, well, that's when airlines and hotels and businesses will, will not exist at the end of this. So, it, again, there's no timeline on the quarantine. But 14 days, yeah, it's not, it's not compatible with traveling. Mm. What about large convention centers? Um, that Scotland has um, a few. Yes. Um, is there any contingency plan for them? Um, because of the, um, it's nowhere near that large international congresses are going to be back. No, um, I mean, they might get domestic ones, but even domestic ones would still have the physical distancing. And this is an expression that the Scottish government are trying to get people to use physical distancing rather than social distancing, because mm -hmm. um, social distancing has got mental health connotations. So we're trying to say physical distancing. But the big conference centers, again, they just need clarity. So they, if they were told what they can do, if they're told to open, but only operate at 50% capacity, you can have an event for 200 people in a room that fits 500 easily, if that's the way it has to be. Um, so it's not impossible. The physical distancing is it's easy to do, whether it's for a wedding. There's all sorts of old-fashioned ways of here, here's your, this is where you're going to dance with tonight at the wedding, or here's your table, um, because there's nothing more easy to control than a business event in mm -hmm. terms of where people go. Mm -hmm. um, and I think now already people are very, I don't know about you, but the last time I went to my supermarket, it felt normal having to queue for a few few minutes. Yeah. And or it felt normal having to pick a time of day to go. Yeah. Whereas in the first week or so, it was, oh, this is terrible. I'm going to drop dead. This is, I can't, I can't live like this. But actually, it's okay. It's yeah. normal. Surprising and, quickly we can get used to the new reality. Well, well, it is. And this is why I think ch things will change quite quickly yeah. um, once people get used to the new normal. But there's going to be a lot that we have to adopt and adapt. And you remember before 9-11, we turn up for our flight you know, at, the, at the gate 15 minutes before we'd walk to the plane, no problem. Mm -hmm. that's, that's gone, but we've just adopted and adapted the new, the new way of living and working. And that is what our industry will have to do. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you would like to um, wish um, our audience um, any piece of advice for DMCs, for example, there's a lot of DMCs in, um, amongst our audience. Uh, what could we do uh, to help move things forward faster? We value all the work that you and your colleagues do, and we guarantee you a warm welcome when, when this nightmare is all over. And I think we will get through it, and we can't wait to see each other again. Um, and we need to just stick in there. Um, yeah, we'll definitely but I think it will need, I think we need to be looking at for new, new vocabulary, new ways of articulating what we do. I think there's going to be a sort of re renaissance business events. They'll look a bit different. They'll still happen, but they'll look different. And I think there's downtime and it's, it's that um, slightly controversial thing of saying, well, 
you know, we all have more time on our hands and there's people in the live events industry saying the number one thing they need to be doing now is having a break, mm -hmm. like rest. And I think there's, there's mixed messages here. It's an opportunity, um, but take the time to work out how we can do things differently because we want to exist at the end of this and visit Scotland and me personally and my team visit Scotland business events. We'll do everything in our power to make sure that we're all here when this is over. Mm -hmm. and we're welcoming your delegates here for a fantastic time in Scotland. Thank you. Yes, a, a very good a thought that I actually read today um, saying that um, we shouldn't think about going back to norm because if we no. go back to norm, it will mean all of this time wasted. We should think about going back to a better uh, industry, yes. better working environment, yes. better values, ethic values when it comes to doing Correct. together. So um, not everything was perfect. So let's let's get rid of the bad stuff now. Take the good stuff forward and make it better, but sustainable. Yes, definitely. Well, on this positive note, thank you very much, Neil, for your time. You're welcome. Thanks to everyone. I hope you enjoy my insights. Yes, definitely. And we'll be in touch and hopefully we'll be back to Scotland very, very soon. I hope so. But take care, everyone, and uh, see you on the other side of this. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Olga, for inviting me. Thank you.